Joe Hopkins here, and today I am putting together the kit guitar, right? I did a video where we painted the body white, and then we did a video where my kid painted the back, you know? Bunch of designs and all that. We did the front, which didn't get on video, because the back dried later that day. We did the front and the sides, you know, like little stripes on the sides and stuff. And uh, by that time, my kid was a little, uh, the excitement of videoing was too much and she needed some chill out time. But we did the front. You can see it's got that neon paint. And, uh, you know, it glows under a black light, which is friggin' awesome. It's why I got the neon stuff, because, you know, you can't really mess it up. You know, no matter what you do, it, it looks cool. It, it glows, it's neon. And you can see I did some of it, she did some of it. You can't tell who did what, because she's good at painting for a seven-year-old and I'm terrible for a 40-year-old. So we're gonna see about putting it together, okay? Got the neck here. Um, I would use the instruction booklet, except for one thing. It's got all the pictures for this guitar and the words for a different guitar. So it is more or less useless, but I've done this before. So I think I can do this again, right? So I know you start with the, uh, the neck, right? You gotta put it on, line up the holes, it comes with the, uh, if I can tear the package open, it's a bolt-on neck. Comes with the, uh, the screws for it. Where's my trash bag? I got a trash bag here. It's the bag that one of the things came in. But, you know, I got to get the screw. One of the screws is in here, and then I got three others there, right? So we got the base plate for the neck. And, oh, there's a plastic bit. I guess it goes, yeah, all right. It's two pieces. Guessing the plastic goes on the back of it. Let me lose the glasses so I can see close, see better up close, right? Flip it over. Make sure the holes are lined up. I'm pretty sure they are. Pretty close. Anyway, we can we can line it up. So let's start with getting the first screw. Uh, the plastic part goes against the body. I am pretty sure. All right. So yeah, everything more or less lines up. We'll start by putting, starting them anyway. I can start them by hand into the body. And I'm hoping this video isn't too long. We'll see how long it takes me to figure it out, I guess. Because like I said, the instruction manual is helpful, kind of, you know? It's, uh, the pictures are right, like I said, but the words seem to be to a different guitar. Like, it's telling me to do things that aren't on this guitar. Like, how to wire up the, uh, this, and you see this is already pre-wired. It makes me wonder what the deal is. So... You do want to get it right, if at all possible. And these holes are not really lined up the best. So with the, uh, with the backing plate, they're more or less lined up. I want to get all four of them started a little bit. And then I'm going to get, you know, the caddy corner ones I want to screw all the way through. Right, one on one corner and one on the other, so I can make sure it lines up with the with the neck. That's kind of where I want to where I want to make sure that's right. You know what I mean? 
Most of this stuff, you know it's gonna line up. There, it's coming through. Most of the stuff on here, you know it's gonna line up. It's the neck, you gotta get the screws lined up right, for the most part. And that's what I'm doing. There we go, that looks like it's about right on there. I want to make sure it lines up on the other corner as well. Now, having done this before, it'd be nice if I had one of those, you know, power screwdrivers. There's ones that all the other YouTubers have are this in it, you know. But no, I'm doing this the old fashioned way by hand. Let's see if that's lining up right. It's not through yet. But yeah, doing it by hand works just fine, right? Now, there we go. Like I was saying, I've done this before, so I know that one of the things you have to look at with the neck, you know, bolting the neck on, Gotta get it bolted on good and firmly, and then I'll tell you after you set it up and play it a little bit, you gotta recheck it because it'll it'll loosen up a little bit. So the uh, there's a time or two that you gotta really tighten it because it won't be as tight as it should be. You know what I mean? It takes a couple tightenings to get it and that's that's not in there tight let's back these off and push it into that neck joint tighter because that's that's the issue you're going to run into with this is just making sure it's in there good and tight it's good to have a mallet Yeah, because you want to get it in properly, make sure it's lined up too. And isn't that a pain in the butt? Once you get the first screw in and get it tightened down properly so that the neck is in right, I know I'm off camera, but I'm squeezing this sucker for all it's worth. There we go. You get the first screw or two in and it'll pull the neck in nice and tight, right? It's supposed to anyway. That's the part that takes the most muscle. Everything else just kind of goes together. And that is taking the most time, but Whatever, so if, it's, if it's a long video, it's a long video, you all can bear with me. Because I know more than a few people are going to find it interesting how it goes together. And yeah, what I'm doing is putting the screws all, uh, not through enough that they show through the other side just a hair. And then lining it up with the holes in the neck. And then tightening it down. So let's see here. Those two are in and it's nice and tight. Now I have done a guitar kit before and I've helped other people with guitar kits before. So it's not like it's my first rodeo. And it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of pushing and screwing, which under other contexts, that could sound like fun. And this ain't too bad, this is cool. Putting together a new guitar is fun. So if you guys wanna get this guitar kit, it's, uh, this one's the Bex Gears, B-E-X 
G-E-A-R-S kit on Amazon. I could put a link, I guess, but uh, in all honesty, things on Amazon change so much. I'll put a link, but if you're watching this in the future, it might go to something that's sold out or unavailable. And then you just, you know, whatever. It, it, all these kits are pretty similar. Some of them have, well, most of them have pre-wired harnesses or pick guards like this has. Because they know it's, it's for beginners. They don't want you to have to solder most of the time. You can look on it and tell if there's soldering from the instructions or the description on the, uh, on the product. If you don't have a soldering iron and don't know how to solder, get something that's solderless, like this. This one, no soldering required, so they say. Um, but most of these kits are pretty similar with the bolt-on necks. I have seen a few that are set necks. I imagine that's its own little skill set if you feel up to doing that. So, what I'm gonna do next, now this, like I said, the instructions weren't terribly helpful, but it does have this green wire that comes off of this one. Different colors depending on what kit you get. I'm assuming this is the ground wire. There's a hole that goes over to where the bridge post goes, from the wiring area to where the bridge post is. That is so it can ground to the bridge post. And what you do is you, like that, you run it through. I don't know how well you can see it, but you run it through the cavity, the electronics cavity, over to the bridge post, because I've done this before. And then set it all in place. I'm not going to screw this in until I've got the ground wire in place. Because I've made that mistake a time or two. Sometimes you have to, if the wire pulls out, you have to redo the whole thing. So, you know, you have to unscrew it and take the, the uh, pick guard back off. So we're going to make sure the bridge is in first. Where's the bridge? Here's the bridge. Where the, here are the bridge posts. So before I screw that in, I want to make sure the ground wire is grounded to the bridge post. And the whole point is you push it through enough so it gets onto the metal part of the bridge post and then you push the bridge post in. So let me make sure that's right. Where are my pliers so I can I don't want to lose it back in there. There we go. You make sure that the wire is showing through that little hole. You don't want it too much through because it's supposed to touch. The bare part is supposed to, basically, the bridge post is supposed to go down there and hold the whole thing in place. If you put it through too far, and I've done this before, when you pound it in, it'll cut the wire. You don't want that. You want it to press against it. There we go, that didn't need a mallet. Let me make sure that it's all good. Just give it a little, the ground wire a little tug. It's held in there nice and firmly by that bridge post, and it should ground to the post that goes in that little hole, those little pre-drilled holes, and the other post just pushes in. Uh, this has the sticky backing. I'm wondering, does that stay in? Because the, uh, the saddle posts are supposed to go through that. So let me see. I did not have that on the last kit. Like, they were just you know, I don't think it had these go through the pick guard. So let's make sure, yeah, it just pushes through. Okay, because it has this little backing on it. So let's, before, like I said, before I screw down the uh, pick guard, I wanna make sure all of this works. It's all lined up right. So we'll put in the saddle posts.
Alrighty, that's a little, that's a little bit new. Let me get the pliers, pull that up a little bit, get it lined up better. Let's line this up with the, with the screw holes for it. That is another difficulty with this, is making sure everything is lined up right. And it might not be, depending on how they pre-drilled everything. I tell you what, I'm going to bring the camera closer in a second here. So, let's uh, make sure all that fits in the holes. And we got that sticky backing is, what is that coming off of there? Yeah, all right, that's part of that zip tie that's holding all the wiring that's sticking through. All right, tell you what, um, we're going to have a quick edit here as I move the camera closer. Okay, now I'm out of the picture, but you can see the guitar better. Now, the problem I'm having here is the holes they drilled for the saddle posts hold this in a place that doesn't exactly line up with the holes they have drilled for the pick guard. However, the pick guard screws, as long as there's enough material there, should go over it, should be able to go in okay. Let me see if I can line it up better, because if I can get lined up better with the holes, that would be best. The hardest parts here on any kit guitar is lining up everything. And you don't want to be too hasty with it. Although we are limited by the way in which the uh, saddle posts hold everything. So those top two holes don't exactly line up right, but we will do our best. And it looks like they line up just on the corner of where it was routed out. Now, it's not going down right either. It's not going down flush right here. So we need to figure out why that is. And ah, ah this might be the problem. One of the wires, the wiring from the neck pickup needs to go around through that routed hole. There's a route in there for it. Whenever stuff doesn't line up, take your time. Try to make sure everything is where it should be. They have channels routed out for the wiring. Try to make sure it all lines up. See, now it goes down flush. But on this particular kit, it's not going to line up perfectly up here on this one. Now yours might be different even if you get the same kit. Because, uh, you know, these things are done quickly. They're not exactly the highest of quality sometimes. I've done a Harley Benton kit and it was certainly better than this. I do have to say. So, let's see. We can worry about the tuners later. Probably should have put them on the neck. Actually, you should probably put the tuners on the neck before you put the neck on the guitar. But, yeah, you know, hindsight's 2020. That's what I did with the Harley Benton kit, but to be honest with you, the Harley Benton instructions were way better. Let me see if I can get it mostly in the hole provided up top here. Try to anyway. It doesn't exactly line up the screws in. Uh, little bit crooked but let's see if it pulls it in okay it looks like that's gonna pull it up a little bit and make it just fine and like I said lining everything up is kind of the challenge on this lining up the neck the pick guard like I said these are all cut pre-done a little 
quickly. It's a cheap kit. Although it, it's not really that cheap. Honestly, I could buy a guitar for a little bit more than what it costs to get this, you know? Or sometimes for the same, depending on what brand you get, you could buy a guitar for what it costs to buy this, this particular guitar kit. But uh, this I get to paint myself. It's a fun project with the kid, you know. And my cousin bought it for me, so yay. I didn't pay for the kit. I paid for the paint. Now you can see, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory. You see, this is the post that I was saying uh, that ground wire goes into. And there's, like I said, a routed hole, a pre-drilled hole that goes from the electronics cavity under here into that. So you can see where the it grounds to the, uh, the bridge post. And the pre-hole drill the pre-drilled holes are close enough that you can get them. Like I said, some kits are better than others. Tell me in the comments section if you've had experiences with different kits and what your experiences have been. So far, my experience has been with the Harley Benton kit and I've seen other kits. Like I said, I've helped some friends put together other kits and they're, they vary in quality. The Harley Benton kits are great. If you get a Harley Benton guitar kit, you're getting something where everything's gonna more than likely line up right. They do a really good job with those. Ah, I still got the plastic on the, uh, on the pick guard. I'm going to go ahead and peel that off. They got it as usual, kind of uh, everything tightened down around it. You can see where the, the input jack is here on the pick guard, all pre-wired up. That is nice and convenient. This kit has everything pre-wired on the pick guard. So that's kind of nice, you know? You don't have to solder. And a lot of kids do that. The Harley Benton kit I did had everything pre-wired. It didn't have a pick guard. It was their SG kit. So it, it wasn't like a pre-wired pick guard like this one is, but it had all the wiring pre-done and you just had to put the various uh, switches and... Uh, knobs through the correct holes and plug in the pickups, you know, run the wiring through the routing. Oh, lost a, lost a knob there. Pulled it off with the plastic. Okay, knob just presses back on. That's not a big deal. There we go. Well, let me, yeah, that one pulls off too, so I'll just get the plastic out from under it. Always have a pair of pliers when you do this. Cause uh, yeah, pliers. I got a rubber mallet in case I need to press anything in. Where'd I put the, there it is. And I got a screwdriver, one of those multi-tip screwdrivers. Very useful to have. That way, whatever I might need, it's there. There we go. This pick guard plastic is always tough around the... I'll leave the plastic on the pickups for now. It's always tough around the jacks and all because they, they got it screwed down over it. I don't really want to take them out. Let's just put the last couple screws in this bad boy. Can't see where the hole is in this one because it's got that sticker plastic on underneath that we put the saddle posts through. Like I said, this isn't just uh, a tutorial for this kind of guitar, for the Bex Gears one. It's kind of for everybody. They're all pretty similar. Like I said, even though the instructions weren't quite right, that grounding wire, 
I knew where it went because they do the same thing on the Harley Benton. And since I've done that before, I know where this goes. And you can see where, even if you have to aim a little bit crooked to hit the pre-drilled hole on this, like there, I gotta aim it a little sideways. It pulls straight as it goes in. So even if it ain't lined up perfect, which this is not, and there's a tiny little gap there by the neck, and that's just because of the way these posts hold the pick guard, it looked like it lined, it lined up right when I checked it out, but once you put the posts in, it pulls it a little south, you know what I mean? But once you get in the hole, everything pulls straight, or everything has pulled straight for me thus far. Yeah, these screws are a little cockeyed, not much. I don't want to screw with them too much because I don't want them to pull loose from the wood. That's tight enough, and it's on there. So let's see what's next. What do we got next, right? So the saddle, obviously, just it sets in there, and it's held in by string tension. So, you know, pretty standard saddle. We're not putting the strings on right this second. Same thing with the bridge, pretty standard. It goes right here and string tension holds it on. And you can see where these have flathead screw adjustments. So when it comes time to do a setup, you can adjust the height of the saddle on the posts, just like a Gibson or that style. Same thing with the bridge, you can adjust the height. But I'm probably not gonna be stringing it up or adjusting anything on camera today. That's a, a process that's a little bit different. So let's go up to, yeah, let's go up here. Probably should have done the tuners first, but whatever. All right, you can see where they got pre-drilled holes. You can see where the tuner goes through and just, you know, line up the hole. Uh, where are the screws that come with this? You got all these little baggies. There it is. You got some nuts and various things. I've got my my lovely little magnetic parts tray here that is great for making sure you don't lose all these little pieces. I would recommend it. If you don't have that, a little Tupperware dish or anything you can put all the parts in. Make sure I didn't lose any screws there. All right, so let's make sure we got the right screwdriver for that tiny little thing. And I think I probably need to get something a little bit smaller. So, I've got my screwdriver kit for electronics. Because, uh, you know, it's good to have small screwdrivers. There we go. Those are little screws that hold those on. So let's just get the first one started to hold it in place, right? And I know I'm flipping over the whole guitar. That's why you should do the... Uh, do the, the tuners first when it's just the neck, but I didn't. It comes with washers and these little bolts. So let's, let's move this over here. Washer goes on, bolt goes over top of it, and we just tighten that sucker down. Got me a 10 millimeter wrench. That's usually what you need is a 10 millimeter. And we tighten that you can see the nuts that hold the end on. It's a washer, and it's one of these little nuts. It's, it looks a little longish. It goes in to the tuner. And you can just... Now we're not tightening everything down completely yet. 
and then we'll finish tightening down the screw. You notice I'm just starting the screw, then tightening down that nut just a little bit, and then finish tightening down the screw. The screw, as screws doer, is getting tight, so I use my pliers along with the screwdriver. We just kind of uh, tighten them down one at a time. And like I said, I like to make sure it's lined up right and that the bolt is on a little bit before I tighten it the rest of the way down. There we go. Just get it nice and tight. I'm going to just set that there for a sec, flip it back over, and I'll finish tightening up the bolt on this side. Make sure everything turns. It ain't going nowhere. There we go. All right. Making sure that's a shallow bolt, so you gotta really hold the wrench on it while it goes down. It wants to come off. There, that's tight enough. And make sure it turns. And it does indeed turn. And you do that five more times, right? All right, so like I said, the uh, tuners, I'm not gonna show putting all six on. You do that five more times, and you got your truss rod cover, which uh, you can see there are three little bolt holes line up right there, or screw holes. They're pre-drilled holes. They line up, they go with the truss rod cover. It comes with three little screws. That's pretty self-explanatory, but that's something I'm going to put on, obviously, after I do the setup. Uh, came with an Allen key for that, for adjusting the truss rod. Uh, it even comes with, like with most kits, it comes with strings. But I'm pretty sure I got better strings than this to put on it. I'm probably going to put better strings on it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, it's not terribly difficult. You can see the hardest part is lining up the neck and lining up the pick guard, making sure everything's lined up. Now, as it looks right now, that's pretty straight. Everything's on there the way it should be. Uh, like I said, if you do one of these kit guitars, after it's together and you play it a little bit, check the bolts holding the neck on. Sometimes they're not completely tight. They feel tight until you play it and then they pull loose a little bit or, you know, the wood contracts, expands, that kind of stuff. And you got to retighten it up. Uh, once you get everything put together, it's just a matter of adjusting the pickup height. The pickups are adjusted all the way down on this. So, like with any kit, you're going to be learning a, a new skill set. Hey, setting up a guitar. You put it together, you got to set it up. It doesn't come set up because it doesn't come put together. So that means adjusting the intonation and adjusting the string height and the truss rod. And those are all different skills. I've done some videos on the basics of how to do that kind of stuff if you want to look it up on my channel. But I'll be honest with you, some other people have done videos that are more informative and probably better than mine. I would recommend looking up a video on it if you're doing a kit guitar. Uh, one of the really great things about these is you can see I didn't have to solder anything, not even the ground wire. It went into the post, holds it in, and should ground it. When I uh, finish this up and try it out, I'll find out if it's grounded right. It should be. I did everything right, but if, it, if the bare metal of the wire isn't up against the uh, post properly, Sometimes it doesn't ground right, in which case I got to take my pliers, pull the post back out, and redo it. Uh, but mostly, for the most part, it's not terribly hard. And I just showed you, it's not terribly hard, and it doesn't take a real long time to do this. 
like I said, uh, I've only got one tuner in it. I'm going to put the other five in. This should give you a good idea how to do it. You know, just do the same thing five more times. Um, <laughs> some guitars have different types of things. Some have those little uh, string holders. I, I forget what they're called. The little, little things that come out and hold the strings in place. So, you know, different guitars have different things. But for the most part, that's this is pretty common for a kit guitar. Some of them do have set necks and they come with glue. <laughs> and I'd recommend going to the hardware store and getting a better wood glue than what it comes with. It doesn't hurt to get something better. You know what I mean? Uh, another nice thing about doing a kit guitar is if you want to upgrade it, all the mystery of taking it apart is pretty much gone because you put it together. So that pain you feel about taking apart a nice guitar, it's not there. You put it together, taking it apart is, is psychologically easier, right? Any guitar is easy enough to replace stuff on. It's a psychological thing. And with a kit guitar, it just, you put it together so it doesn't bother you taking it apart, I guess. You know, or at least with me. Uh, the last kit guitar I did was my Harley Benton, and it, it's wonderful. It went together great, and it plays spectacularly because I had to learn how to do the setup. And because of that, I did the setup perfectly for me, right? It might not be perfect for you, but if you do a kit guitar, when you get to fiddling around with the setup, it's going to be perfect for you. And it's a great way to learn how to do a setup on a guitar. Because uh, you put it together, you have to set it up. But, you know, all this stuff, this is uh, really kind of neat. I'm pretty sure this guitar, if I look somewhere, it came with another nut. I'm not going to change the nut. I could have swore it did. I don't see it now. I'll look for it later. Anyway, I hope this video was somewhat informative, gave you an idea of putting together a kit guitar. It's not that intimidating, really. I just did it in... Where, where am I at here? Um, I don't know, under 30 minutes. So, and, and that's what talking to you guys, I could do it probably a little bit quicker if, it, if I weren't doing a video. So don't be afraid to build a guitar. Give it a shot sometime. And I think this video is long enough. So <laughs> check out uh, some of my playlists. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna pop up here at the end of the video. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment. Tell me if you've done a kit guitar and if there's anything like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, baby. Bye-bye.